Hey guys, it's me, Saran, back with another video. Uh, TGIF, it's Friday, Friday, Friday. Uh, it's chilly, so as you can see, I have this hoodie on. Uh, no one gets scared. <laughs> I'm not going to shoot you. <laughs> um, this video is going to be hopefully quick, quick one. Um, it's going to really focus around this whole Sony Pictures email leak that has just kind of taken, you know, pop culture in the world by storm, and, and I want to talk about a couple of other things regarding uh, some white people as well. <laughs> um, so in case you guys haven't heard, um, a series of emails were hacked this week as well as I believe some were hacked last week. Um, private emails between some really, you know, big wigs, high ups at Sony, which is, you know, a major company. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Sony. Um, and initially, there were some nasty things said about Angelina Jolie, calling her a spoiled brat, and there there were some things said about Kevin Hart. He didn't want to tweet for free, he didn't want to do free pro promo, and he was called, you know, a whore and a greedy whore. And recently, another set of emails um, were released between Amy Pascal, who's the co-chair of Sony, so she's like you know, one of the huge higher-ups, and Scott Rudin, who's a, you know, an Oscar-winning producer in Hollywood doing films. This series of emails came out between them, and the emails were, like, really, really racist. They're making these racist jokes about Barack Obama. Um, they're talking about, you know, oh, what what should I talk about, you know, at this luncheon with Barack Obama? And, and Amy Pascal's like, oh, you should, you know, talk about movies. What do you think, what type of movies you think he liked? Oh, you think he liked Django? Like, oh, no, 12 Years a Slave. Oh, no, you should bring up Ride Along. He probably likes Kevin Hart. Ha, 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 ha. Yuck, 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 you know? M basically saying that because he's black, you know, he has to like black movies and just, you know, talking about, you know, black, black film characters in a really derogatory way. And again... The, the comments that they made about Kevin Hart. And these emails are being slammed. Um, again, they also had an email about Angelina Jolie calling her, you know, marginally talented and a brat and this and that. And it's funny because Amy Pascal actually ran into Angelina Jolie, if not yesterday, then the day before. And there's this, like, awkward-ass picture of her looking like he's she's groveling at Angelina Jolie's fucking feet for these nasty-ass emails that she sent out. But anyways, that's not the point of this video. The point of the video is the, the racist tone of the conversations that they really had about Barack Obama, who's our president, you know, and Kevin Hart. Um, they've both since apologized. Amy Pascal put out this really, I think it's obnoxious. Other people won't call it that, but I'm just going to say obnoxious. She put out this really obnoxious public statement talking about, you know, even though these emails were meant to be private and they hacked into my private email account and released these private emails publicly, like she's putting all this emphasis on, you know, oh, it was private and they did something mean to me. She goes, you know, th these were joking comments, you know, they were meant to be in jest, but now in the harsh light of, you know, the public eye, I see that they were insensitive and people think that I'm a racist now and that's not who I am. I take offense to that. I've made other videos about culpability and how white people seem to have this idea that they don't have to be culpable or responsible for anything they say, which is extremely ironic because white people love talking about personal responsibility and you need to take personal responsibility for this, personal responsibility for that, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and why aren't black people taking personal responsibility in their communities? But then when it comes time for white people to take personal responsibility for the rex racist, sexist, you know, otherwise offensive, things that they say and do, all of a sudden everyone wants to throw their hands up in the air and say, you know, oh, well, it's not my fault, and, you know, I didn't mean it, and they were just jokes, and I'm not a racist, and blah, blah, blah. And some people have, you know, called this relatively new phenomenon, and, and a prime example of the fact that we currently live in a culture of racism without racists. I feel like that's a really great term. Um, there's a couple books about it. Um, a great sociologist made up the term. I have his name here. Eduardo Bonilla Silva. 
Uh, he wrote a book called Racism Without Racist. I'm going to put some links so, of course, you guys can read about it and, you know, buy the book if you want. And basically what he says, you know, what he theorizes is that t in 2014, you know, of course, this book came out a few years ago, but I'm just going to use 2014 because we're in 2014 now. What he theorizes is that, you know, currently in modern day post-racial society, people have this idea of racism as something in the past, you know, when they think of racism, they think of, you know, Jim Crow and segregated lunch counters and the civil rights movement and, you know, canine dogs and slavery and using the N-word and, you know, burning crosses and things like that. And since those things are not acceptable and are not really happening on, on a large scale anymore, people feel like racism is a thing of the past and they feel like they are not racist. And what racism without racists really is talking about is, you know, not large scale, you know, in your face demonstrations of racism because that's no longer acceptable, but more so casual racism, unconscious biases, microaggressions and things like that. People don't seem to find those type of things to be racist. And Benia Silva argues that, you know, this is why our national conversation about race doesn't go anywhere because white people just kind of throw their hands up in the air and say, well, I'm not racist and, you know, what I said wasn't racist. It was a joke. It was my opinion. It was this. It was that. They refuse to face the facts that they are casual racists, you know. They're not necessarily burning crosses on people's, you know, front lawns, but cracking a racist joke about Barack Obama having to, like, ride along Kevin Hart because he's black is a racist joke. And you're probably a racist scumbag, you know. So, I actually wrote a post similar to this on Tumblr the other day that... I feel like this pretty much sums up white people. There's three kinds of white people. You have white extremists. White extremists are the in-your-face racists. Those are the members of the Ku Klux Klan. Those are the people that are burning crosses on your front yard. Those are the people that are very happily calling you nigger to your face and telling you that all niggers live in the ghetto and, you know, they're all lazy and on welfare and on public assistance, you know. Those are the people trolling in the comment sections on Huff Posts and things like that, you know. And I feel like white extremists make up a very small percentage of the population. And then you have white allies. Those are white people that actually get it. They they get that there's something fundamentally wrong in our society and in the way that we, you know, relate to each other and the way that we talk about race and the things that are happening with institutionalized racism and police brutality, you know. They get that there's something wrong and they're trying to learn and do better and be better and understand, you know. They're also the minority. <laughs> there's also not as many of them as there should be. The vast majority of white people, in my opinion, are white moderates. And a white moderate would be someone like Amy Pascal, someone that does not necessarily think of themselves as a racist, but exhibits, you know, casually racist behaviors. Like we're talking about racism without racists. White moderates, and I feel like most white moderates, if they're pushed hard enough, they can easily slip into white extremist territory because most white moderates have have these outdated ideas and these outdated concepts about race and racism and they feel like they're not racist but they actually are. I got into a conversation with someone on Tumblr about hiring procedures. You know where he goes, you know, oh, I'm a, I'm a hotel manager and I don't have any black people on my staff and you know, people I've been accused of being racist, but that's not my fault because we don't have any black people that apply. I live in a majority white area, a rural area, and you know, a rural neighborhood and we just don't have that many black people. I said, "Well, you know, if you live somewhere where there's just not that many black people, there's just nothing you can do." I said, "But in most circumstances, you know, and in most cases and especially in you know diverse cities and you know in the Hollywood industry you know, the movie industry the modeling industry things like that where we don't see the tech industry where we don't see enough diversity I told him you know that excuse doesn't really fly that excuse doesn't really hold water because studies have shown that you know black and brown bodies minorities you know black people and Hispanics especially are graduating from you know college at higher and higher rates you know increasingly high rates they're getting tech degrees they're getting these higher level degrees and the hiring procedures just don't match up to the number of qualified minority candidates. And you have to consider the fact that there is a bias towards white people. And then he goes, well, you know, that's not my fault that all black people live in the, in the ghetto. Oh, now all black people live in the ghetto. 
Tell me, tell me more about how all black people live in the ghetto. And, and I said, you know, that sounds racist. All black people don't live in the ghetto. He goes, I'm not racist. You know, oh, so citing census data now means I'm racist? I said, no, just all black people don't live in the ghetto. If you're telling me that there's not a single black person that lives in your, you know, rural area, I'm going to believe you. But you also have to think about why don't any black people live there? Do you guys have issues with racism? Have you had a history of being a sundown town? Are you in the south? Do you know about the Great Migration where black people were pretty much forced to flee rural areas for urban areas because of lynching and discrimination and racism and, you know, lack of opportunities and things like that? And before you know it, he has reblogged my Tumblr post with, you need to learn how to stay in your place. And bam, just like that, a white moderate became a white extremist. And now I'm dealing with a racist. And I feel like this is the way a lot of white people operate. And these emails between these Sony executives is just another example of that. Shonda Rhimes put out a series of tweets blasting the media for calling these emails racially insensitive but refusing to call them racist. Again, we're living in a society of racism without racists. People are basically trying to make conversations about race and, and racism and calling people out on their bullshit into a taboo subject where people can say, and by people I mean white people, where white people can say and do these incredibly racist things and not get called out on it because people want to believe that racism is a thing in the past. So we'll call it racially insensitive. So we'll call it, you know, oh, it's my opinion. I think all black people live in the ghetto, but that's not racist. That's just my opinion, you know. I think all black people commit violent crimes and they're all drug offenders, even though the facts say that white people use more drugs and actually commit more violent crimes against other white people than black people do. Oh, well, that's my opinion. No, it's racist. It's racism. It's casual racism. It's participating in a society that has created, you know, a whole generation of racism without racists under the guise of jokes, you know, opinions. Clemson was recently in the paper because one of their fraternities had a Crip mess party with people dressing up in blackface and dressing up like gang members. And tons of the comments said, you know, well, I don't see what's wrong with this. They're just throwing a party, you know. They have the right to express themselves that way. I don't see, it's not like they burned a cross on anybody's lawn. We need to stop holding on to these outdated, you know, modes and models of racism and really move into the 21st century and move into 2014 and understand that, you know, casual racism, microaggression, unconscious biases, these these still exist. This is a thing, you know, and it's still really prevalent and relevant in, you know, why black and brown bodies are still suffering today, now, you know. Um, so read up, you know, I'm going to include tons of links because this stuff is, you know, it's really interesting and it's hard to make people, again, especially white moderates, feel aware of this kind of stuff because they already feel like they know everything about it and they're above it and racism is just in the past, you know. So please feel free to read up, educate yourselves as always. Uh, I'm also going to include a link to a blog post. World Trust Org, which I have done videos about in the past, they're an amazing organization that's doing some really interesting um, things with race relations. They have a documentary series called Cracking the Codes that's excellent. I think everyone should go watch it. They recently did a blog post about me, which was cool. So I will probably put a link to that so you guys can read that as well. And um, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, quick little video on Friday about casual race and racism because um, it is a thing and it does affect all of us and we're certainly living in a society you know of racism without racists if Ferguson and everything else has taught us nothing else it's certainly taught us that in the back of our minds you know the majority of our of our white society that consider themselves to be you know white moderates certainly not racist still hold these racist beliefs and thoughts and you know you never know when an email is going to get leaked and we're going to see the things that you privately say to one another so uh thanks for watching tgif have a great weekend see you guys next time food for thought as always peace